Hey guys, Gaiden here. Today's video will be the last of my weapon series videos on Mordhau, at least until more content comes out, and we'll be talking about the Polearm family. Now, typically I talk a little bit about the generalizations of Polearms and the pros and cons that affect all of them. However, it's going to be a little different in this video, mainly because I feel that each polearm is different and unique, that they both have their own pros and cons to it. So generalizing good and bad to every polearm would be a bit difficult, so I'd rather let each weapon speak for themselves. Now, that doesn't mean polearms don't have anything in common, but the two things that I will mention before we talk about them individually are the fact that polearms are typically the longest weapons in the game. In fact, the longest weapon in the game is the spear. And the second thing with correlates to the first point is that every single weapon on this list can be couched on horseback, making this both doubly effective on foot and on horse. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's actually talk about each weapon individually. Starting off kinda strong is the quarterstaff. In terms of length, the quarterstaff's reach is on par with the great sword, and if you use its alt mode, shorten it down to the size of a bastard sword. On paper, it doesn't seem all that great. Its damage is poor in both swinging and stabbing. Its alt mode does decrease range, but increases your speed at a cost of damage as well. And since it's a blunt weapon, it stops on hit, so you can't hit multiple people with it, and you can't kill them very quickly. What really makes this weapon good? Well, I'll tell you. The quarter staff is cheap and dummy fast. I mean, really fast. And the fact that you can change the timings with your ult mode, it can be pretty overwhelming, especially if someone doesn't have that much experience against a quarter staff. Now, in game modes like Frontline, Skirmish, Team Deathmatch, I would be strongly recommend you don't use this weapon. But in duels, it's actually pretty good. And that's why I would consider telling you in 1v1 situations, Quarterstaff can be a pretty fun and great to use weapon. Otherwise, stick to the other weapons on this list. The next weapon on this list is the Short Spear, a weapon that has definitely earned its reputation alongside a shield. Its strongest point is its static, so it makes sense that a person will constantly use its strongest attack. Swing damage is okay, nothing special, and primarily you'd want to stab with this weapon anyway. Especially since you can't combo on swings, but you can on stabs. In weapon speed, it's no rapier, but it's fast enough to constantly barrage your opponents with stabs and force them on the defensive. But we can't forget the hidden gem of this weapon is its ult mode, throwing. And I've talked about throwing your primary weapon before in other videos, but the damage of the short spear on hit is incredible. It's a death sentence to a headshot, and unless your opponent is wearing tier 3 armor, it's an instant kill anything below that. Also, if you hit your opponent with tier 3 armor in the head or the chest, if they have anything less than half health, that's also an instant kill. So, throwing spears, even the javelin, which does the exact same damage as a short spear thrown, is almost always worth picking up and using as a ranged weapon when you can. Next up is the Billhook, a anti-horseman weapon that's also pretty incredible in every other way. The only real thing lacking with this weapon is its swing damage, which is a bit underwhelming when you're fighting against enemies with higher levels of armor. Beyond that, its stabs are quite strong, on par with weapons like the Longsword and the Rapier. Also, the fact that you can de-horse riders is incredibly useful. Even though its weapon length is just a smidge shorter than a Zweihander, it's still pretty long for its cost, especially compared to other weapons in its weight class. Now, where this weapon really shines is its negative knockback, which what that means is, when you swing with the normal mode on a bill hook, you will actually pull your opponent towards you, and being on the receiving end of that is really disoriented. On the alternative, switching to your alt mode actually does nothing major except instead of using your swing to pull them in, your stab you can now drag them in as well. Now, this really doesn't have anything to do with horses falling off, so you can either use a swing or stab regardless of your alt mode to pull a rider off his horse. 
Now with that said, other niche uses can include hitting a whole group of enemies with a swing, disorienting them all, or even just pulling and dragging someone into a bear trap, leading for a really satisfying kill. Even if you don't play in game modes that include horses, I definitely give the billhook a try. The next weapon on this list is something that's been asked about for a while now, and I'm talking about the Poleaxe. The Poleaxe is a best of all worlds kind of weapon. It has an axe on the front, a hammer in the back, and a stabbing point for a spear, making it pretty much a bladed, piercing, and blunt weapon all in one. The Poleaxe has a decent reach, being the equivalent of a longsword. It has strong strikes, strong thrusts, and is overall a pretty solid and well-balanced weapon. Alternatively, you can switch to the hammer by using your alt mode. This will feature a slight increase in damage, allowing you to kill in two shots to the head at max armor, or two shots to the chest plus a kick against the torso. You can't do this with the regular mode. However, the disadvantages are you gain stop on hit, which can make it less than ideal for a 1vx. Overall, the Poleaxe is a very versatile weapon, and I would recommend using the Axe side in 1vx's, and it is a viable option to use the Hammer side in 1v1's. And definitely, don't forget that powerful stab. Now passing the halfway point, we'll be talking about the heavy hitters of this video, starting off with the Bardish. This is a very interesting weapon, and actually one of my most favorite weapons in the entire game, which I will get to shortly. In terms of reach, again, it's another weapon the same length as the longsword. However, its alternate mode reaches a whopping 140 centimeters long, outranging even the Zweihander and the normal mode of the Halberd. In terms of damage, it's incredibly strong swinging, being one of the most powerful weapons on average per swing in the game, even against tier 3 armor. However, the same thing can't be said about its stabs. The stabs are on the lower end, but they are still useful enough to have its place and good for mixing up your attacks, as well as being strong enough to kill an opponent after you land two hits successfully on the opponent's chest. Now, if you decide to use the alt mode, you will get a drastic increase in range and increased headshot damage at the cost of speed. But my absolute favorite part about this is that you can instantly kill someone that doesn't have any leg armor at all. Now, it's not as meme as the Maul being able to one-shot anyone with level 3 armor at the head, but considering that you can surprise someone that has full level 3 armor head and chest, but they decide to skimp out on their leg armor, can lead to some pretty funny kills, especially when they're not expecting it. And now we've reached the star of this video, the Evening Star which is hands down one of the best weapons in all of Mortal, and I really mean it. This weapon has been banned from competitions, and let me tell you why. In terms of range, it's pretty solid for a blunt weapon, in fact a giant polearm blunt weapon. It reaches as long as a bastard sword, but you can shave it down with your alt mode down to something the size of a mace, or an axe. In terms of damage, its swings are incredible. It will instantly kill an opponent with level 1 head armor or less, but will take 2 hits to the head with a swing, anything above that. To the chest, 2 swings is an instant kill no matter what armor, similar to the maul or the mace, and to the legs, it'll take 3 hits. However, if you switch to your alt mode, all of a sudden, your stabs now can kill in 2 hits as well. So you can kill with a swing and a stab against any tier of armor. There is no other weapon in the game that can actually do that. That's what makes this such a next level weapon. On top of that, its stamina defense is great, its stamina attack is great. In terms of swing damage, you can increase the speed by using your alt mode or get the range advantage by using the normal mode. There is so much versatility with the Evening Star that makes it such a dangerous weapon, and I've seen it in the right hands that just the way they move can make it so unpredictable how they attack. And remember, it's a two-hit-to-kill weapon most of the time, so if they trick you once, you're already on death's door. So the Evening Star may not be the best 1vx weapon, but in a duel, absolutely incredible. Second to last, but not least, is the big brother of the short spear, the long spear. The long spear is a whopping 180 centimeters long, 
and even its alt mode is a whopping 135 centimeters long, on par with the Halberd and the Zweihander. The spear is a great weapon for especially front lines. It is a good support weapon that you can use from behind your opponents to stab and harass. Using thrusts will be your main source of damage. You can use swings in a pinch, but they are a bit below average in damage what you want to be doing, especially against higher armored opponents. Another feature to the spear is because it's so long, it's incredible on horseback. In fact, it's the preferred weapon of most horse users. That range is incredible, and using it as a couched weapon will pretty much be instant death to whoever tries to stop it. Interestingly enough though, the only weapon that can outrange a spear that's couched, or even a lance that's couched, is the spear itself. The spear when extended with a thrust will actually outrange a spear or lance that's resting in the couch position on a horse. So if you're ballsy enough or good enough, you can actually outtrade a horseman using a lance or spear. If you decide to use the alt mode, the alt mode trades that long range for, well, still pretty long range, but much faster speeds, and is much better for that close 1v1 combat that you may need to fight with. Also, the regular range with the spear you can't combo with, but using the shorter alt mode you can combo with, which is very useful. Also, the stamina defense actually improves when using the alt mode as well, from around the average defense to excellent defense on par with some of the other better weapons to defend with. This lets the spear be effective in both big team fights as a support weapon and very close range fighting as a alternate mode short reaching weapon. Arriving at the end game is the Halberd, the final weapon on this list. In terms of reach, it is 135 centimeters comparable to Zweihander, and its alt mode, a whopping 165 centimeters, only right behind the spear. It is a massive weapon. In terms of damage, this 11 point weapon does not disappoint. Its swings are big and devastating, and so are its stabs. In fact, switching to your alt mode will be similar to a bardish by increasing your headshot damage, but you do lose the ability to combo and your swings become slightly slower. However, these giant attacks can be great for dragging and really getting through your opponent's defense. The one real downside though is because the weapon is so expensive, you will definitely have to sacrifice armor. So if you're someone that especially likes to play full 3-3-3 like I do, you will have to make some choices whether you want to skimp out on head armor, chest, or legs. Personally, I like 2-3-0 as not being able to get one shot from any weapon in the head is great. 3 chest armor is really nice for not getting two shot by any weapons as well, except for big maces and hammers. And, well, no leg armor does suck, but unless you're using a bardish, a scythe, or even an executioner sword, you're usually safe from an instant death. I've seen success using the halberd in team fighting modes, as well as duel modes. But if I were to choose between the two, I would recommend it more so on game modes like Frontline or Skirmish, since that big range and the ability to hit multiple people is great, but you may want something a little shorter and faster in a 1v1 like a Bastard Sword or a Battle Axe or anything of the sort. Overall, the Halberd, even though it's expensive, is an excellent weapon and definitely a top choice of mine. And that's it. That's all the main weapons in Mortau, at least the ones I think are worth talking about. I probably won't make any special videos on archery or projectile weapons, peasant weapons, and tools. I think that's kind of been done with and they're pretty self-explanatory in the first place. As I said earlier in the video, this will probably be my last Mortau video for a while until we see something from this content drought. So devs, please give us patchy. As always, I hope you enjoy the video and you learn something interesting from it. I always have fun making them. And for the future, I don't know what kind of content I'll make, but we'll see when I get there. So I hope you stick around for it. This is Gaiden. I'll see you later.